deal with airplane peanuts. We like and love these types of people. We like high profile, glossy uh, people that are are vapid and don't have much going on in their heads, but think they do. Like they are under the impression they have big thoughts, big, big thoughts. Like Megan and Harry, I've listened to both of them talk. Garden variety retards, both of them. She's hot, he's royal, mm -hmm. but garden variety morons. Either one of them. I watched Megan and I watched Harry. They were using their emotion to cover up the fact that they were not smart. They were not too smart. And they were, obviously it was an emotionally charged interview mm. because they had just left the country. Mm -hmm. uh, they had found out that the royal family is uh, r racist, mm. which was shocking. Um, up until now, they had only thought that the, the royal family uh, had murdered Harry's mother. But upon finding out that in addition to murdering Harry's mother, they were also quite insensitive on the topic of race. No good. Up until that point, you said, well, they're just an Illuminati death cult mm. that drink blood and live for a thousand years and have murdered my fiance's mother. <laughs> but we're going to give them a shot and let's see how evolved they are. And it turns out they're not too evolved. Mm. And I watched the uh, Oprah interview, and we talked about it on the show. They're just not bright. Mm -hmm. So like many people, uh, but they believe they are bright. Be they say the right things. They're like, there are so many people in the world without. Yes. <laughs> there are so many people in the world without, which is why we have to come to Los Angeles and live in a beautiful mansion mm -hmm. with round-the-clock security. We got to get a deal at Netflix and make documentaries about people that have fucked. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. They want to be on Netflix and make documentaries about people with cleft palates. Mm -hmm. She's a Hollywood actress. means she's ambition. She has uh, ambition. Um, actors are stupid people. They're not smart. Mm -hmm. Very few of them are intelligent. And the ones that are intelligent are much, much older. Young actors are, and we know many of them, they're insanely dumb to where it's noticeable. Have you ever been with someone who's so dumb it's noticeable? Where you look at someone else <laughs> as if to be in disbelief at what this person is doing. If you had lunch with Meghan Markle, you'd be stunned at how dumb she was. Not because she's black, because I wouldn't think she was black if I looked at her, because she's an actress who was on the show Suits. Okay. She's an actress. Harry is an idiot. He's an idiot for two reasons. Number one, he signed up to fight in the Afghanistan war. <laughs> that was a dumb move. You're a fucking prince. What are you doing that shit for? Number two, <laughs> I know it's heroic, I guess, after 9-11, yeah. but I think he signed up years after that. That's hilarious. And number two, I, he's still believing this dumb story that the paparazzi killed his mom. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just... So she gets him to leave his family. She goes, She goes. why do we want to stay here? And I get it. I'm for them. Why do we want to stay here? They're racist. The weather sucks. The food shit. Let's go to L.A. We'll eat sushi by the pool every day. And we'll make documentaries about people with cleft palates. He goes, well, is it, is it when their face is all? Yes. She goes, and then every now and then we'll fly one of them over. We'll clean up their face. And we'll take them to Disneyland. But we got to get out of the U.K., and we got to come to the U.S. and we're going to go on Oprah. And then every idiot in America, but he's like, but they're mad at rich people. Not our kind of rich people. <laughs> she goes, I'm kind of black <laughs> and you're an idiot. So you just, and you're willing to be emasculated. So you just sit there and eat your own cock on TV. I'll tell Oprah that they were chasing me around the Royal Palace with nooses. And then Netflix <laughs> will open up a suitcase full of money. And we'll go do documentaries about kids with cleft palates. Is it like where their lip is in their nose? <laughs> yes. Yes. Just Google it, Harry. So that's what went on. Watching people fawn over them. We like royalty. We love it. We like rich people. Stop pretending you don't like rich people. 
Stop predicting. The people that tweet about Marxism all day then talk about how much they love the Real Housewives. You just can't quit it. And nobody is a realer housewife than Meghan Markle, who married this ginger retard <laughs> and took him out of his racist family <laughs> so that they could live in Beverly Hills or wherever the fuck they live <laughs> and make documentaries about people without hands. On Netflix. Netflix, by the way, <laughs> who's committed to just giving these people anything they want, whenever they want. They're making a cartoon. What is the cartoon about? It's called Pearl. Yes. It's about a young girl who is inspired by influential women in history and counts David Furnish and Liz Garbus among its executive producers. Uh, yeah, I guess that's it. The Pearl. adventures of a 12-year-old girl who's inspired by influential women in history. The series currently in development. That's all the information we have. That's it? Uh, she's on a journey of self-discovery as she tries to overcome life's daily challenges, says Well, Markle. that sounds great. <laughs> Good for her, man. Do you know how many actresses that do a show like Suits just get thrown out in the street true. afterwards? Yeah. Meghan Markle parlayed that into a fucking royal wedding and then a year in or a couple of years in said, fuck that shit, mm -hmm. and left. And I'm not saying the royal family was not racist to her. I'm sure they were. But that also didn't start when she got there. <laughs> An exciting tale that weaves together fantasy and history. Pearl focuses on a young girl who learns to step into her own power when she embarks on a heroic adventure and meets important women from history along the way. So you know what this is going to be. Like, Pearl's going to go back. You know, there's going to be a scene where Pearl's like... Who are you? My name is Harriet. <laughs> Harriet who? <laughs> Harriet Tubman. We got a railroad. And you go, oh my God, this is the Underground Railroad? Yes, it is. This is so amazing. I can't believe it. You're so brave and strong. Yes, I am, child. But I'm not nearly as brave and strong as Meghan Markle. <laughs> Who's that? She was an actress on Suits. It's a TV show. <laughs> Yeah. She married Prince Harry. You know the son of that woman they killed in a in the thing in the tunnel and they said the press did it, but you know it was good because she was gonna marry Dodi Al Fayed. <laughs> he was Muslim, it's a whole thing, it's oil, <laughs> Saudi Arabia, whatever. You gotta follow Cynthia McKinney on Twitter. <laughs> what? Anyway, <laughs> I'm just saying <laughs> Yes, I'm where's Cynthia McKinney at the Met Gala, by the way? That all she did was talk about 9-11 all day. Where is she? Where is she? Where is she? <laughs> well, here's what I'm saying, child. <laughs> I'm saying that I may be brave, but the bravest person ever is Meghan Markle. Mm. Thank you. I'm excited for that show. That is the message from the government. Sure. If you don't have symptoms and you've tested negative, uh, you're not out of the woods. So, by the way, that's fun for the anxiety. Hopefully nobody has anxiety. One in three L.A. residents have been infected by coronavirus. It's a new estimate. It's a Nielsen rating. Right. We think this amount of people are watching Jersey Shore. We don't know. <laughs> but if you have anxiety, this has been great. Hasn't the last year been nicer? Remember when we all cared about mental health? Right. All of a sudden, that went out the window. When the media every other day is going, Are you? do you feel good? good guess what did you test negative guess what you got it bitch <laughs> it's real and it sucks but here's the other thing and this is a little a message for the people that have survived it because i've had enough i really have had enough now with i was in a yard yesterday two people in the yard had had covid mm -hmm. they hijacked the entire event which was not really an event it was just a, a hang they hijacked it to discuss how they both beat COVID, how bad it was, and how no one in the history of the world will ever understand the struggles that they went through. Not AIDS, not cancer, not those pussies with ALS. Nobody will understand how hard it is to beat COVID. I go, I haven't had it. I said, I've been being relatively careful. I said, I got very sick in March. I had all of the symptoms. I had tightness of the chest. I had chills. I woke up in the middle of the night. I couldn't really leave the bed. I was exhausted. I could make it from my bed to my couch. Maybe I lost smell. I don't really know, but I know that my taste was all fucked up. I could barely eat. It took me three and a half weeks to get my things back. And then they look at you and they go, no, you didn't have it. You would know if you had it. 
this doesn't even feel organic. It's a bioweapon that you do battle with. And they're literally doing like Cobra Kai moves in the yard about how COVID, they're like, you think you're good, and then it hits you from the side, and then you double over, and then you have to kick, and it hits you again. And I'm like, what? And then I'm like, well, other people get really sick. You know, my friend's mother had pancreatic cancer. She fought that for 10 years. And they're like, fuck that bitch. I had COVID. You don't understand. It's a bioweapon. They act like they defeated the Chinese military with this. You can't even get a word in edgewise with these people. You can't say that other people get sick. People die of cancer. Is cancer not a thing anymore? What about AIDS with these fucking people lesions all over the place. How about Ebola? I mean, these fucking cunts will go to Africa, be people bleeding out of their eyes. There's lepers on the thing, and they go, you don't know about COVID. I couldn't taste my hot dog. You don't know about COVID. It's just a bioweapon. Ebola is just one of those cute diseases that comes from the nature. It's not a weapon. I beat a weapon. So it just gets a little... It gets a little frustrating. What is that? It Frust- frustrating. Fru- is doesn't it sound better as frustrate? I do like that. It's quicker. This whole thing. We know how bad COVID is. We know how much it fucks people up. I've had friends tell me how 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 bad it has been for them, both physically and mentally. I understand that. Dan Carney, for example, my opener who's had it is now occasionally tired. So I get, I get it. The point is, I don't know why I haven't gotten this, but here's what I will tell you. I know that it's really bad and vicious it, when people get it in a bad and vicious way. But is one of the symptoms that you have to discuss it for seven months afterwards, is there any let up here? Because truly, when you bring up any other disease, they look at you like you don't get it. And I'm like, well, what about ALS, where you get diagnosed and you literally become a puddle and then die within two years? They go, <laughs> they go, no, nah, still no, not a bioweapon. They go, you don't get, they go, you don't get it. This is made in a lab and I beat it. And then they tell you, they're like, this is how I beat it. I sat in a room and I just went, I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat it. I'm going to beat it. And they're like, you don't even understand the what you go through, the mental fitness you have to have. And I'm like, yeah, okay. But again, my friend's mother fought a death sentence, pancreatic cancer, for 10 years. It's unheard of. The woman was out doing marches. She was raising money. There are people that overcome horrible conditions. There are people born with horrible conditions. Okay? Okay? So this idea that the only thing in the world that anyone, the, 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 the mark of a man is that he beat COVID. The mark of a man, the mark of a soldier. They're acting, and I know it's bad, but the way that they're talking and acting makes me feel so much less sympathetic for them Mm -hmm. because it's getting obnoxious. It's obnoxious to tell a group of people that somehow they're less than because they didn't beat what they're calling a Chinese bioweapon. These are the people, by the way, that have had it. They're like, China tried to take Hong Kong with this (laughs) bioweapon. I beat it, but it's tough. How about ALS? Get ALS up. That's a walk in the park, apparently, because of uh, COVID. Let's get ALS up. Muscle cramps, tight and stiff muscles, slurred and nasal speech, difficulty chewing or swallowing, which, which ends up no chewing or swallowing, okay? Literally, what it does is it immobilizes you. Mm-hmm. Oh, and it's insane how bad it is, okay? Difficulty swallowing, drooling, lack of restraint, mild cognitive impairment, severe constipation, unintentional weight loss, shortness of breath, difficulty raising your foot. So you bring this up to these people and they go, dude, you don't even get it. (laughs) You don't even fucking get it, dude. This is like lab made. It's something else. Something different. It's just annoying. It's just annoying. (laughs) And it's got to stop. I know it's bad, but it's got to stop. Life... Is a Pandora's box of horror, okay? People have all kinds of problems. Some people's problems are greater than others. Some people have to go through horrible things, okay? I understand that this can be an an insane life-changing event for people. It could be a horrible thing. It could kill them. It could kill me. I've been open and honest about that. But what we don't want to do is annoy people to death as well, 
by, by pretending that you are the only thing that matters and that the things that you've gone through are the only things that anyone should ever take seriously. That everybody else in this country that's suffering because we have an opioid epidemic or because their jobs have evaporated or because they don't have health insurance, okay, or that they work all week for shit wages and nobody cares about them and they have to fucking navigate this world without any help from anybody, those people should all shut the fuck up because you had a, got sick. I had COVID, okay? I don't want to hear about your hemorrhagic fever, your Ebola. Boo. I just did a little fake business. Now, you know that I do this. A lot of the audience don't know that I do. I do fake business. I call up realtors all day when I'm bored and I pretend I'm a realtor and that my client is very interested in their property and I ask them lots of questions about their property. I just did it with a commercial property on uh, Palm Canyon Drive. I said, hey, this is Tim. Uh, I have a client of investor that's really interested in the property. What are we looking at per square foot and what are some of the local restrictions we should know about? And, you know, these whole things, they, they go into this whole thing. They go, well, you know, they don't want a coffee shop in there because Starbucks, there's a competing business clause. So Starbucks doesn't want a coffee shop. This is how the corporate takeover over of America is, by the way, because when Starbucks moves into an area, they go, yeah, we don't need, we don't want some independent coffee shop opening. Not all areas, but a lot of them. We don't need somebody slinging lattes for less than we are. So the guy goes, well, there's a Sprint store, so we can't do a competing business, blah, blah, blah. And we talked about it. There's a lot of parking behind. I said, thank you. I said, I have an investor, but he's very concerned about, you know, the competing business clause and everything like that. And I was on the phone with this guy for about 10 minutes. And he said to me, oh, Tim, that's cruel. Their time has value. No, it doesn't. And I will continue to do fake business because I enjoy, I like doing fake business. It's one of my favorite things to do. I like to call people and I like to lie about who I am and, and, and what I do. And then I like to see how they conduct business because on their end, they're conducting real business. I'm conducting fake business. Now, never the two shall meet. We've gotten to the point where I was, we we're almost, one of my clients who doesn't exist was almost going to put an offer on a house. <laughs> this was last week. I was, I've been on the phone with this realtor for like 45 minutes, three times in a row. I've had the blocker finally. She doesn't know what happened. Sometimes I have to block the people because fake business gets very intense. Fake business, people start drawing up contracts. I mean, she was calling appraisers. She was going to have inspections done. You know, I was representing a very motivated overseas client. Now, sadly, that client died of coronavirus before we could go see the property. That's not my fault. And I tried to explain that to her, but she was kind of confused and started saying, oh, this, you know, blah, blah, blah. Are you real? Is this real? Cops, FBI, whatever, blah, 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 blocked, blocked. I'm helping train these professionals. Do you understand? Yes or yes? I, by calling them, people need practice. So this schmuck over there on Palm Canyon, oh, I did use my real name, by the way. <laughs> like, this is Tim Dillon. And sometimes I make up a firm name. Sometimes I use a real firm name. Sometimes I just say, this is Tim Dillon with Futures. He goes, what? And I go, Futures Investment? And he goes, okay. You just go, okay. I go, yeah, all right. I go, yeah, you got a commercial listing on Palm Canyon on the corner. I'm wondering what we're looking at price per square foot. What's the parking in the area like? What's the competing business clause? Well, any local restrictions we should know about? I have a team of investors that are looking to expand into this area. Many of them, uh, sometimes it's a franchise, sometimes not. But I'm just, you know, it's an investment group. They're very interested. They love the visibility of the location. Oh, he goes, it's a great location. So they love the visibility of the location. And see, right there, we're beginning to do fake business. Because then he goes to his wife and he goes, hey, I just got a call from a guy that may be interested in this. And then he tells his secretary and then he tells his partner. So I'm in. I'm in and I'll give him a follow-up call later tonight. I'll have 10 more bullet point questions before I bring my investors. And I do this. Now, a lot of people, <laughs> I was explaining to someone at dinner that I did, I do this. And they go, that's horrible. I said, Why? doing fake business. They go, why? I said, I like doing it because I don't have a real estate license <laughs> and I can't do real business, but I at least can do fake business. <laughs> they said, that's pretty sick. I said, maybe you're sick because I want realtors to get the best professional. I want your golf a lot, right? Mm -hmm. When you golf, when you golf every day, are you better at it? Yes, absolutely. Now that doesn't matter. Now, even that includes going to a driving range. Sure. Right. 
Correct. Right. Sometimes I see golfers swing clubs in their backyard. Mm -hmm. Helps. Helps. Doesn't matter if it's real or fake. What matters is that this guy's going through the moat. The next guy to call him might be real, but I'm going to beat that guy out. <laughs> I'm going to do a competitive <laughs> offer. Hello? Hey, Adam, Tim Dillon, how are you? We spoke about the property on Palm Canyon a few minutes ago. Yeah, hey, Tim, how's it going? Good, buddy, how are you? I wanted to know if there's a list of... The, the competing clause, uh, my client's asking me if there's a list of businesses, whether it's Starbucks, Sprint, things like that, that we could kind of figure out what the restrictions are just so I could kind of email that to them because he wants to show it to the, the his investors, if that's possible. Also, is there a way they can get out to see the proper, okay. property maybe later in the week? Yeah, yeah. I live about four minutes from it, so not too difficult. Um, that and. Um, uh, I will just go to the center right now and send you a quick list of all of the businesses that are in there already. I, I would appreciate that. Let me ask you a question too. How long has this property been on the market? I have I haven't looked it up yet. Yeah, I've been marketing it for maybe I think we I was I just signed it like right when COVID hit, okay. and then I delayed it for like two or three months. So I'd say maybe like two or three months now. Okay, and what, before you had it, was it was it sitting there for a while or no? They always like to know these things. Uh, yeah, I don't. I know Banner Mattress was there up until recently. Okay. Um, so um, I know there's a mattress firm this, like right across the street. Yeah, I saw so. that. Is this would this be a five year lease mm -hmm. or what? What are we? What are they looking for in terms of commitment? It's, yeah, really just depends on the the tenant and the rate and things like that. Obviously, the longer the the commitment, the better we can do on the rate. Um, but um, you know, I think they're open right now. Okay, and I and I imagine they're five years. And I imagine they're open to some form of negotiation, at you know, given yeah. the climate. Of course. Of okay. Course. Well, I appreciate that. We're I have. Here, we're here to do deals. Yeah, me too. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, me too. It's a little wild out there, you know. Uh -huh. Are you guys mainly Definitely. commercial? Or you do any residential? Um, I do a bit of both. Okay. So good. Yeah. You got to be kind of a generalist out here. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, a lot of people are starting to get interested in this area. And I think it's because, you know, LA's had a lot of problems. And a lot oh, of my yeah. a lot of my clients, I do business primarily in, in, in Los Angeles. And a lot of people are starting to look at this area. And um, you know, a lot of them are, are, are excited about maybe jumping into uh something here, you know, because the high season, I imagine it's what, January through through June? Uh, yeah, January through April is our high, high season, right. um, but pretty much like right now, like September through April, um, you know, so we have kind of, we kind of have like a shoulder mid season, uh, right. which is September through December. Right. Um, and then January through April just crushes and then, uh, Coachella is obviously in stagecoach are in April and that kind of, you know, and we have. In Memorial Day weekend, July 4th, even of, during the summer, we do pretty well. Of so. course, I appreciate that. Well, listen, I have you guys. I have your website. I'm going to shoot you an email, um, just again, introducing myself. And then if you could just get me a list of some of those competing business clauses, just so I can show it to them. And uh, hopefully they'll get out to see it sometime uh, next week. You know, they're, they're super interested. One of them lives out here in Rancho, and uh, they pass it all okay. the time. So they, they had me just kind of reach out to you and see what was going on. But yeah, they're, they're sure. pretty motivated. And again, I think it's all about, you know, how restrictive those clauses are. Yeah, I, I think they're going to be pretty flexible. So I'll, I'll shoot you the businesses. Yes. And uh, we'll see if we can do something, okay? I appreciate it, Adam. Thanks a lot for your time. All right, thank you. So I do, it's fake business. And I'm doing it well. I'm doing it well. Let's be honest. I'm doing it well. I'm protecting the interests of my clients. <laughs> I'm prote Am I not? Am I not protecting the interests of my clients when I conduct fake business? My fake clients are important and they need to be protected. I want them to have the maximum amount of freedom in any given situation. You understand? Start doing fake business. It'll change your life. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. Start doing it. No one can start. You don't need a license. You just need a phone. And a computer, and you can start doing fake business. Set up a fake email address. I have one. Start doing fake business right now. It's the gateway to real business. I've done nothing. You understand? 
I do not get bad reviews on Airbnb because I treat people with respect. Now, let's describe. Let's describe some of the issues. Number one, I went. I was told I was going to a luxury compound in Joshua Tree. Luxury means something very specific to me. Okay, it doesn't mean necessarily stylized, high concept, and artistic. It means luxury. It means fluffy couches and nice carpets. Luxury. I feel luxurious. Mm. You understand? Yes. Um, we went to a, a nice thing in Joshua Tree, which is the place where all people in the tech industry go to take mushrooms and people that work for ICE go and have, you know, to take DMT and figure out how to build stronger cages to put kids in. You know, it's great. It's for people having revelations. So we go to Joshua Tree, which is really just, it's a litter box for drug addicts. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. It's a litter box for drug addicts. And I know that a lot of people like it, but that's what it is. And that's who you are. So we get into the house, the house, the, the, the furniture in the house is like, it's all, it's all, of course, these are two white women. I believe they're lesbians. I don't want to uh, say that they're lesbians. I don't know, but their names are stupid. Like one of them's names is Mila. It's like, it's a stupid name. You're a ridiculous person. Okay. You accuse me of breaking a cactus? How do you even do that, you goofy bitch? Shut the fuck up, <laughs> okay, you slob. So I walk into your fucking house, which you can't even sit on the fucking floor. I got fat people here. They're 400 pounds. How are they going to sit on your cowhide chair that's a little thin thing of fucking leather? What are we supposed to do? This guy's 900 pounds. What are we going to do here, okay? Every piece of furniture can't sodomize the guest. You have to have some fucking chair that works, like an actual fucking chair. Throw a beanbag in there, okay? Not everybody's a 90-foot, 90 90-pound 90 lesbian on ayahuasca that can perch on a fucking birdcage for the whole night, okay? You freaks, listen the fuck up. Talking to you. People are going to rent your house that are actual people that need actual furniture to actually sit. Not everything's a fucking trip to hyperspace. There's actual 3D reality that some of us have to fucking live in. So we went there. <laughs> and we do nothing to the furniture. We, we literally don't damage any of the furniture. They have these kitchen stools that are concrete slabs. Mm -hmm. Mila, Mila, we work so hard for the... Shut up. Get a job. They're a concrete slab kitchen chairs. High top kitchen chairs. Okay. Mm that are like art pieces. These are not chairs. Right. And they have little stools that are made out of what? What was that? Like hollowed out, so like marble or yeah, a- Yeah, the, the, the marble petrified wood. Petrified wood or, or, or I don't know what it was. It's but tall though. It's, yeah, it's yeah. a little stool yeah, yeah. that you're supposed to sit. It's a tiny little table mm. where, where your ass can't even fit on this small little thing of wood that you have to sit on <laughs> and eat. I don't even know what, right? So- <laughs> They just want you doing drugs. Do you walk in? There's a big mortar and a pestle there, yeah. and they're like, "Just crush it up, just crush it up and do it. Get it into the blood stream. and that's fine." Listen, I get it. I got Jaja take the shrooms, but some people want to have a nice meal there. We treated that house like it had never been treated, it with wholesome American food. We went to Vons in the desert, and we got burgers. And Bush's baked beans. And we cooked baked beans. And yes, beans explode when they're hot. Yeah. Whose fault is that? I didn't come up with the idea for the bean. <laughs> they explode when they're hot. And then we wanted uh, Gorton's fish. We got the Gorton's fish, mm -hmm. which is very nice. Uh, the breaded, pre-breaded Gorton's fish and some tartar sauce. So, we, so baked beans, Gorton's fish with tartar sauce, cheeseburgers, and then seven pints of ice cream so we could try. Just have a little ice cream testing. And we left a few dishes. In the sink. In the sink. A pot of exploded beans. Yeah. An extra tartar sauce I didn't even use that I said you can use. Mm -hmm. um, some ice cream. I mean, the smell of the house was fish and bean. Yeah. But that's not my fault. You can have a cleaning crew. She's like, the cleaning crew complained. What, what is it? My fat maid over there probably complaining. But it's like, well, why are they complaining? They're supposed to be cleaning. Their job is to clean. Okay? So this bitch then texts me. She goes, our cleaning crew had a heart attack, LOL. So I'm like, okay. And then she goes, but please give us a good review so we stay on Airbnb. So here's the deal with Airbnb. We review each other. We don't know what we've said. If you're going to come reach out to me and ask me for a good review and acknowledge that the cleaning crew is like, oh, we got to wash some dishes. I'm like, okay, they're not mad. 
We didn't do anything. There's some dishes in the sink, but it is what it is. I paid a four hundred dollar cleaning fee. You stupid cunt, yeah, yeah. Jonan Mila. You fucking pigs. I'll burn your fucking house down. By the way, anyway. I texted them that. I texted them I was going to burn their house down. And I sent them a gif of the Simpsons house burning. I'm like, I know where your house is. And they're like, are you threatening me? I'm like, let's just see what happens. I'm like, stay safe out there, you stupid desert dykes. Anyway, so I responded to her by saying, no one broke anything. Your house sucks. Because she said I was a bad guest. And then, and then people are like, did this really happen? I said, yeah, it really happened. I said, the, few, the furniture is unusable. You're not artists. Your home is wildly overpriced. True. You begged me for a good rating and then trashed me. The cleaning crew complained about cleaning. Who's your cleaning crew? There were some dishes. That is all. I don't really care about your reviewers. I don't rent out my home to strangers like an animal. Good luck with everything in the future. The place is a dump, and it looks like it was furnished by drug addicts, which I imagine you are. Please get the help you need. If you want me to take you to an AA meeting or an NA meeting, I will. Go to Ikea. Get some actual furniture, which hopefully you can afford. Not everything has to be an art piece. And feel free to use the tartar sauce I left behind later pig. And that's what I wrote to them on Airbnb and no response. And then I, and I, and then I sent a few that could have been considered quasi threatening messages, but they were not threats. They were an art piece like your furniture. They're not meant to be sat on or taken. Literally. I was doing an art piece. Yes. You see, it was all a metaphor. And it angered, it angered me because she shit on me publicly on Airbnb, which anyone can see mm -hmm. truly. And now I look like the bad guy. I look like the bad guy. Fuck you. We didn't do anything. Dishes were in the sink. The hot tub wasn't hot. You already paid $400 for a cleaning If we're seat. not supposed to eat the Gorton's fish, why would they sell it at the supermarket? I'm not getting fresh fish. I trust the Gorton's fishermen. Yeah. And it's a lovely, if you've ever had a Gorton's, they're lovely. Very good. And then the McCormick tartar sauce goes very well with it. It pairs very well. I thought so. Yeah. I'm sorry I wasn't doing speed balls in your bathroom like the rest of your guests. You fucking pigs. You've done nothing but create a fucking satanic vortex for people to sin. And I didn't take part in it. I made bowls of baked beans. I'll, I will not toler I will not tolerate being disparaged publicly like that. And this good man, does he, I, he did nothing wrong. He slept in a room where the sun hit him directly in the face. As soon as it came up, yeah. Because there were no fucking curtains. Yeah. Because curtains are too basic for these fucking hoes. And I hope they hear this, by the way. I hope someone in your garbage life shows you this podcast. You are nothing. Do you understand me, you clowns? Look at your Airbnb picture. You're, you pose with your fucking dogs. You're clowns. You are not interesting and you are not an artist. You are failures and you are drug addicts. And I'm telling you right now, if you had any clue, the holy hell that was about to rain down on you, you would fucking run. You would, head, you would run out into the desert and sacrifice yourself. Because every day, I swear <laughs> to Christ, every fucking day I wake up and I think about how to destroy you in that shithole. And I'll figure it out. And see, this is what I mean about the cops can't call me out on this because it's my right to kind of vent these frustrations. And I can't because they can't knock on my door and say, hey, did you say you're going to kill these two dykes and Joshua Tree? I can't. <laughs> this is what I mean. Do you see in real time I'm proving my point from the beginning of the show? That's why the show is entertaining. And it's informative because... Because the reality is we're all having these thoughts all the time because what I really want to do is gas these two in their house and watch them just, <gasps> I want to watch them fucking climb over their shitty art house furniture and get to the fucking door and just, just, <gasps> they can't get any breath and then fall and then just walk in and I want to piss on their corpses, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to talk about it. Do you understand the difference? I put that up. And I said, today is my birthday. I want to thank my parents for all their support. This is what you created. Enjoy it. And my aunt wrote a comment. And the comment, let's not find it. Let's not find it. Yeah, you're right. And the comment was, and my cousin sent me the comment. My co the comment was, the saddest part is that you have your grandfather's name and you don't care at all and, and you care nothing about his legacy. Very, very nasty comment. Very, very nasty comment. And you know me, I hate to bring family drama on the show. Mm -hmm. I hate that. I hate that. You know, I don't do it. We can get this down. <laughs> I, I really don't do it, okay? 
Uh, my aunt Kathleen, by the way, okay, uh, comes for me on Instagram, brings up my grandfather, and insults me on the day of my birth. Now, let's get something straight, you bum bitch. <laughs> Didn't you fake a drug overdose? Didn't you fake a suicide attempt? I keenly remember you faking that you overdosed on drugs and you were taken to a hospital in an ambulance in front of your mother who had just dealt with grandpa's death. What part of grandpa's legacy were you honoring with that behavior? What part of it? Do you remember that? I remember you going to a hospital and then having the entire family go worried about you, not me, but other people, because I know what you're up to, you clown bitch. They went to the hospital and said, what drugs is she on, doctor? And the doctor goes, there are no drugs in her system. She literally pretended to be unconscious, so then an ambulance went to the home, put her in it, and drove her to the hospital scaring her mother half to death. Grandpa's legacy. Okay. What part of grandpa's legacy were you thinking about when you took his money for law school and then never practiced law and were fired multiple times by multiple law firms all over Long Island because you're mentally ill, forcing uh, your father to set up a pretend law office for you in your basement that you pretend to be a lawyer in? You added a phone line to the house to pretend to be an attorney. What part of the legacy is that? What part of the legacy is borrowing money from your more successful brothers and sisters and not paying any of it back <laughs> while you sit around the house doing Percocet and drinking white wine? What part of the legacy is that? Are you honoring his days as a carpenter? Is that what you're honoring by sitting around and getting junked up on the couch, pretending to OD? And by the way, the life you live, you don't even have to pretend, okay? You can't even do that right. So I'm just wondering why you would bring up my grandfather, who I have all the respect in the world for, a legendary character, patriarch of an amazing family, rose from poverty, did all these things. Why come on my Instagram and say anything negative and, and bring up a guy who who every day with your life and your choices, where is his legacy in mind? Kathleen, and I know you watch this, okay? In between reading Q drops and letting Fox <laughs> News broil your already Vicodin-addled brain, okay? It's the wrong day, Kathleen. I'm the wrong one. You know that. I blocked you on the family. Uh, I, I got a new phone to get the family fucking group text because you kept texting people about all the dishes they have to do when they come to the family parties. Bitch, no one's coming anymore. No one cares. I don't want to be near you. You should be in a padded room. How my mother is in an asylum and you have somehow escaped it <laughs> is beyond me and it's beyond everybody. You are a disgrace. Drug addict, potentially closeted lesbian. You've never moved out of the house. Nobody respects you. You are a pedophile probably. You are gross around kids. <laughs> Nobody wants you fucking taking baths with their fucking kids. You're a fucking weirdo. They got to watch you like fucking Epstein. So don't F keep my name out of your mouth, okay, pedophile drug addict? This is the fake business mug. <laughs> and the fake business mug uh, is is not on sale anymore, no, is it? It's no, still it's for not. sale. Oh, it is for sale. Till the 28th, yeah. So you don't work, you don't have a family, you steal money, you fake drug overdoses, you're a moral degenerate, <laughs> you, you, you have no respect for people, you drive wedges in between people in the family, and you attack successful people in the family. My grandfather did none of those things. He was a devoutly religious, incredibly generous, brilliant hard worker who raised an entire family, you are the exact opposite of all of those things. All of those things, okay? Every one of them. I blocked you. I got a new phone to get out of the group chat because I didn't want to deal with your constant terrorism or updating me like, hey, uh, little Tom got his license. Who? Hey, who gives a fuck, dummy? Get a job. 
Get a fucking job. I have a job. Why don't you get a job? Stop worrying about who got their license. Nobody wants you near their family. You fucking freak. Where's your man, bitch? Where's your woman? Where's anything? What are you doing? I mean, let, let's get real. I mean, this is a woman who does nothing but but attack, attack, attack. And by the way, fuck my fam. I, I like some of them. But, and then my aunt goes like this. Uh, she goes like this. She goes, she goes, oh, well, you know, if I bump, she's told this to somebody else. She goes, if I bumped into him, I'd really give him a piece of my mind. How are you going to bump into me, bitch? I don't live in your kitchen, okay? You, you've never left. You've never left home. I'm in Malibu, ho. How am I going to bump into you, okay? Buying Tampax at the local CVS for your barren, childless vagina? How would we ever bump heads together? Keep my name out of your mouth, scumbag. You're a degenerate. You're a moral digit. This isn't even a podcast anymore. I'm talking directly to you. You are a failure and a moral degenerate, okay? Come pig from a sketch a few years ago on my chest is a funny, dumb joke. You, my friend, are a disgusting nightmare that nobody wants to be around. You're a thief. You've stolen people's money, haven't you, Kathleen? You've stolen money, haven't you? You know you have. Where's the money, Kathleen? Did you take it? You took all the money, didn't you? And then you go cry. And some people in the family be like, you're being too hard on her. Fuck you too. <laughs> hey, fuck you too. You think I give a fuck about any of you? Fuck you, bitch. I have a family, okay? It's Joe Rogan and Candace Owens, my mother and father. Give a fuck about you fucking clowns. Go do a fucking Irish step dance. I don't give a shit. This bitch is out of her fucking mind. You are out of your mind. Just bring in my grandfather, my Instagram, trying to, trying to knock me like that. It's a shitty thing to do, especially from you, who's accomplished Zero in your entire fucking life. And I, I would be worried that you'd sue me, but you don't know how to practice law. <laughs> You're not a real lawyer, are you? Because you work from a basement. And you have pretend clients. You set up a Care Bear you had from when you were fucking nine and you still have because you never left your house. And you go, hello, Mr. Care Bear. Did you have a Dewey? Well, let's look at your options. You're a clown bitch. No one takes you seriously. You should be getting electroshock therapy. That's kind of how I wanted to start off the show. Okay, that's it for this video. Honorable mention to the gates of hell and the night of the beating. Those weren't videotaped, so couldn't really include them in this video. But here's one more rant for you. Go follow Joker World on Instagram. We have these free stickers for everyone that DMs us. Go follow us, dude. There's 7,000 people following on Instagram and 56,000 following on YouTube. That doesn't make sense. We're posting very similar stuff on Instagram than we are on YouTube. Get over there. I don't know how to get you guys over there. This is my rant. This is my only rant. Go follow us. Get these free stickers. Just DM us your address and you get these stickers. You can put them anywhere you want. Do you have stuff that is ugly? Ugly, look, it makes it better. You can put them on your friends, you can put them on stop signs, water bottles, laptops, your asshole. It doesn't matter. Go get these stickers, go follow us on Instagram. That's it. Have a great day.